This is a 2440 100 watt. Since she uses it so much, we actually built a wooden stand for it to sit on to get it higher. So it doesn't, it's not on its wheels anymore. Um, over here on the right side, the electronics are in the bottom doors here. And uh, that's where we tie in the solenoid switch for the air assist as well as the power for the uh, for the solenoid though. Um, and the, the lights as well. We did do the LED light strips the whole way around on this one. These, these ones are temperamental on the left here. I gotta resolder them. But um, as you can see, this one, the, the air assist up here is the stock. And what we did is, so we have the California air compressor back here along with the chiller and they're plugged in. Um, we have the six inch uh, AC Infinity inline fan up here and it just goes into the back of the laser. Um, the switch for it we have run over to here on the wall. So this is the switch for the AC Infinity right now. Um, then, so the air line comes out of the air compressor and it goes into the air regulator. So if you unscrew this the whole way, it'll shut the airflow off. Then it goes out of here and it goes over into the solenoid net, which in this laser is in the inside. So I'm not going to be able to show you that, but it will be the setup that's on the video that uh, I, I will be sending the link to as far as how to set that up. So that's the 2440-100. Again, the only changes we've really made to it are the LED lights that are wired straight into the 24-volt rail, the uh, air regulator and uh, the fan replacement, and the uh, solenoid-controlled air valve. So I'll show you more details about that upstairs because on that laser it's on the outside. Okay, here's the 2028-80 watt. Um, similar to the uh, 100 watt, all the electronics are down here on the right side, except for the, the laser power supply. I think on both of them, the laser su power supply is actually down here on the left. Uh, again, we did the 6 inch AC Infinity. The fan for this one was in here, and in both cases, there's the case, then the fan, then a fairing. And like I had to remove the fan from there and then bolt the fairing back to the case. Sorry, I guess I should be aiming down there. And then this ductwork hooks to the fairing, and obviously with the fan out, out of there, this becomes your fan. Um, in the back is where the air assist typically is. There's a door down on the bottom back here. I'm not gonna pull the whole laser out to show you. It really just looks like a big aquarium pump. And those both hook to the 24 volt rail. Um, both the fan that was in down here. Oh, by the way, you know, Lee should be happy. I have a banana for and with scale. Um, but now this is the maximum depth now that I can show you since I cut these bolts off. See these bolts, whenever I ran through to hook the fairing back up, they were sticking out a little too far and hitting the tray. So that's why it didn't go as deep as I thought it should. I have the airline unhooked there for a reason. In a moment, I'll show you that. So anyway, uh, this is the new solenoid setup, and this is the advanced one. So the air comes from down the basement. We actually have the uh, the California Air Tools down the basement here. This is the air line coming up from the basement. It comes up into the regulator. So if I screw this out, it completely shuts off the air from the regulator. I don't have anything coming here. Then it goes from the regulator back into the solenoid. And there's a bypass, as well as the actuated valve, and there's a shutoff here if you want to turn it off completely. Although this can turn it off completely, or as mentioned, the regulator can turn it off completely. So the way this works, the air comes in here. If the solenoid's shut off, the air comes out here, and then this valve can be adjusted to just provide a little bit of airflow and go out and then into the laser. I'll open this door in a minute and show you that. Um, if the solenoid opens, the air passes straight through full pressure and you get the higher pressure for cutting. So when it's running without cutting, you get low pressure just keeping the lens clean. And then if you go to cut in light burn, you can set it to air assist on. That'll open this up and you go full pressure. Now one of the annoying things with this one 
is they've added these keys for the doors, which are a bit annoying. So, all right, so opening this up, you'll see, I'm gonna stretch that hose there a little bit, but, um, oh, that's the laser power supply on this one. The laser supply is on the opposite side on the big one. So anyway, the there was a power wire that went through here. Um, actually, two of them. One went to the um, fan and one went to the air assist. I pulled them out and they ran down just into this block. So they were receiving a direct 24 volt power and ground. So they were always on if the laser was turned on. Uh, with this setup, the air compressor only kicks on when it needs to provide pressure and the fan is turned on remotely, which I'll show you in a second over there. Um, the only wiring now is the solenoid is just passing through this door and you obviously can put the solenoid inside if you want, that's what I did on the bigger laser. But it goes into the tray, then it comes up and it ends up being these two wires here that go into wind, I think it's wind and ground, or no, wind and 24 volt. Um, those are, those will be covered in the other video that I send you that the other guy made. So those are, the, that's the more advanced and this works really well. I really like the design and I just want to lock this so that it doesn't fall open again. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is with the new lens setup. So whenever I hit the autofocus, which I'll go ahead and do that now. So... Wow, well, that's bright. But I'll hit the Z up down, and I'll go down to autofocus. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see the bed's coming up. But what it'll do is it'll push up on this and stop. And then it lowers back down the amount that you have your Z offset set to. The Z offset you have to determine based on a ramp test. Uh, so, I, we can talk about that more later if you want. Um, that's the Mansfield Customs Rotary. And the other thing I wanted to show you is this lens. So, this new design, you've got this plunger that is your switch for zeroing. Um, so this lens setup is different, but you can see the silver piece in here rotates. Well, there's a set screw right here and you will get an Allen wrench set with the laser. I usually don't bother tightening this because there's no real need to, but this Allen wrench that comes with the laser will open that. And then you might have to get a pair of needle nose pliers to hold this tight the first time especially, and then get it loosened. So this is the new lens setup, and I'm gonna take this apart. Okay, so with the new lens setup, now this is a short nozzle I got because I have a one and a half inch lens on here. So I had to buy this separate. This was about 12 bucks on Amazon, but it took like a week or two to get. So that's a short nozzle. Whenever you first get the new uh, lens setup, there's a different nozzle on here and it's an 18 millimeter lens and the nozzle has the lens inside of it. So this is the nozzle that originally came with it, and it was actually longer. I really wanted to go to the 38.1 millimeter and didn't, hadn't figured out the 20 millimeter lens solution that would work with the, uh, with the other part. You know, that's the way I showed you it's mounted in here. So with this one, I ground the whole bottom off and 3D printed a spacer to go in and uh, basically not neck down the nozzle. But to show you what you can expect to see, it'll be like this, and this ring comes out and releases the 18 millimeter nozzle. And again, the nozzle you get with it will probably be, or I'm sorry, the lens you get with it will probably be a uh, two and a half or a two inch lens, which again is a fine general purpose lens. So, which is weird. That's nothing like the bigger laser that we have. What I found is a 20 millimeter lens will fit fine in this red piece as long as you get one of these um, shim, uh, I forget what they call them, but it's basically the ring, the retention ring, that's what it is, that will screw down and tighten against the lens. Um, and 
that seems to work really well with the one and a half inch lens and this short nozzle we end up with a focal length being about five millimeters five and a half millimeters below the tip of the nozzle which is perfect for what we do um, the two inch nozzle that you get with the laser in the um, in the default nozzle will work fine for you it's it's an 18 millimeter you can just stick with 18 millimeter two inch if you want but if you want to get a little bit more fine detail you may have to go here the one that's going to be interesting is trying to get a four inch cutting uh, nozzle because this is going to be different there might have to might have to get a an extension that will screw into this to give that four inch uh, four inch focal length down to the tip of the nozzle so I haven't tried that yet but that's the one thing that's weird with this design is that that the four inch nozzle is going to be a challenge because this is not like the normal accessories that you can buy for these lasers. This is a whole new setup that they don't have a whole lot of accessories aftermarket for yet. I'm sure they will soon because these the focusing here is vastly superior to what they had in the other lasers. Um, but as you can see this one came with a LED light bar on the bottom of the rail. Uh, I do want to put more along the outside. Again I'll just wire those straight down into the 24 volt block and get 24 volt LEDs so they'll just be on whenever the laser's on. The other thing to note is this has the airline connector for the rotary on it. And with this one, it's kind of annoying because it's back in there. I have to unhook that airline connector, run this wire through here, and hook it into the rotary, or to the airline connector back there. Um, on the 100 watt, which I think is closer to the design, design you're gonna get, that's right here, so it's much easier to access. So, um, and then as far as the AC Infinity fan goes, it just is ducting out to a Home Depot six inch, basically a bathroom duct that I found. And uh, here, this is the control for it. So it's like 10 variable speeds, but it gets pretty loud, so I'm gonna leave it off for now. So that's a quick overview on what I've done with ours, and it seems to be working really well. Oh, there is one other thing I did here. Let me raise the bed up. Oh, wrong way. Oh, can't do that because I zeroed it. So, anyway, the point being, with this one, there was no def definite place for the bed to lock on the front here, so I did drill a couple holes and I added these two cleats uh, right here and one right over here that prevent this. So now I put it in and I can get a nice firm lock right on the front and it's always right in the right spot. And then as far as the pass-throughs go, again, they added stupid keys on these now, but these are the two keys to open the pass-through for the front to back pass-through on this one. And then on this one, they don't even have doors on the side pass-through, that's just your side pass-through there. So um, that's, what I've done, again, I'll send you this video, and I'll send you a link to the video where the guy did the, uh, the simpler air assist. The only difference between the simpler air assist and this one is this piece, this piece, and this piece. On the simpler air assist, this is just straight, and it goes right into the laser. There is no bypass. Um, the, the solenoid is the same, so we can add this to the uh, other laser pretty simply just by getting one of these and one of these pieces. So, but the wiring and, and basic functionality of the Air Assist, this advanced one, is the same as the simpler one in the video, so it should be fully applicable. I do want to say one other thing, just so you're aware. You ordered the Ultimate Air Assist kit, which I ordered as well. It does have one or two components that you will not need. It was just simpler to order that kit than try to piece everything together. The main reason for that is there's a relay to turn off the, um, the internal air assist because that kit is meant to work with the internal air assist, not with the air compressor. So you'll end up getting, or you have a solenoid, or not a solenoid, a, a relay that looks like this you won't be using that. 
I mean, you can use that somewhere else if you need it, but, and basically that'd be able to turn on the 24 volt power with a switch or something. They also add a switch so you can hard off the thing, the, the, so like you'll, if you look up the ultimate air assist instructions, they mount uh, an actual toggle switch here to kill the power completely because you have an external air compressor <clears throat> that has its own pressure regulator on it and shuts itself off. You don't even have to worry about that stuff. Um, the biggest thing is you need the two, two fittings to go into the pressure regulator here and here. Um, the straight fitting will go into the solenoid back here. Um, the valve fitting will go into the solenoid here the T and then whether you put this in or not is up to you because realistically you don't really need this either because you can always just t shut the air off completely by loosening this till there's no pressure in the line and then whenever you need the pressure turn this back on realistically you almost never want to operate with no pressure in the line except maybe on the powder coating but you stand a good chance of getting a really dirty lens and possibly even cracking your lens by running with no air because you have no back pressure in your nozzle then just keeping dust and stuff out of your nozzle and off your lens so I apologize for the fact that you probably got some parts you don't need but it was a far or simpler way to order it and that's what I did so that's that <laughs>